Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation I'd like to show you how to determine the radiation characteristics and the phase centre for the horn antenna from the previous tutorial using ANSYS HFSS. As this horn antenna is the feed for a double reflector antenna, the focal point of this first reflector needs to be placed in this phase centre. I've already opened the horn antenna project which was solved in the previous presentation and so as to show the horn antenna's radiation characteristics, and in particular the phase center, I'm now adding a coordinate system, a relative coordinate system to be precise. The relative coordinate system should be positioned at 0, pos, 0, where pos is a new variable that indicates the position, and I select 0 millimeters. With respect to alignment, the y-axis should be oriented in the direction of minus z, and in this way the new z-direction of the relative coordinate system is orientated in the direction of the horn. Next I'm going to incorporate a far field setup. I'm not interested in a whole sphere, only a section, as the whole thing is symmetrical. And I want the theta to go from minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees in steps of 1 degree. Furthermore, I'm going to adopt relative coordinate system 2 as the center. I can now portray the radiation characteristics in terms of a rectangular plot. I'm interested in the realized gain, and I want to know whether the wave is left hand or right hand polarized and I can see from this illustration that it is left-hand polarized. The next step is to determine the phase center of the horn antenna, and so I'm adding a parametric setup. And I allow the position to vary from 0 to 100 millimeters in steps of 2 millimeters. Then, under Calculations, I add the angle variation. I again select the left-hand polarized wave, and select the continuous angle in degrees. And I here specify the variation as peak to peak, with a range of between 0 and 45 degrees. I press OK and add calculation, and I've thereby completed the parametric setup, and I can now start an analysis. And I can also view the results. This analysis occurs very quickly, as the position constitutes a post-processing variable, meaning there's no need for new calculations. The position of the minimum at 68 millimeters can be ascertained very quickly by means of this plot. We can now compare the phase angles in relation to the phase center. So I make a rectangular plot and apply the phase angle in degrees. I now record the range from 0 to 625. Apart from that, the only thing that interests me here is the range from minus 45 to 45 degrees. I can now add a trace characteristic so I can examine the variation of the phase angle more closely. I put peak to peak here and go to the range of minus 45 to 45 degrees and press add and done. And here I can now change the position variable from 0 to the minimum value of 68 millimeters. We can see that the variation of the phase angle is 90 degrees. 
When I change that here and press Update Report, we see that it's a variation of 16 degrees, i.e. the whole thing varies significantly less. To finish with, we can now look at the geometric position of the phase centre. This is the source of coordinate system 2, which can now be used to set up the first reflector, in order to model the geometry as a whole.